forgiveness and share that story. Uh, this week, our example of forgiveness comes from the Forgiveness Project book. Guys, you don't want to miss this uh, story. This is a, a story from the Forgiveness Project um, website by a woman named Bridget Perenyi. She's from Ghana. She was sold into slavery at age seven. And she's going to talk about her lifelong journey of forgiving her family for allowing that to happen to her. So stay tuned for that story. And then, of course, as always, we have our special guest. Every week we have a special guest on the show who talks about a, his or her own example of forgiveness. And our goal, guys, our, our hope is that you guys can hear the stories this week, hear the content this week, hear the testimonies this week and say, you know what, if that person can forgive in their life, I can forgive in mine. We want to open up those doors. We want to prod you along to forgiveness if we can. And if you're struggling out there, we want to let you know it's okay to struggle. But let's get started on that path of forgiveness, on that path of fulfillment. And uh, yeah, in that path of satisfaction and peace that can be found through forgiveness. Now, before we get started, guys, a few housekeeping rules that we need to acknowledge that normally, guys, if you come to my live stream, it's very different from this. I read every single comment. I thank each and every person for your gift and trolls are welcome. Pretty much anything goes as long as you're not racist, homophobic or vulgar. Uh, it's a little bit different here tonight. We're all, we're going to have a tight rein on the comment section, guys. We're going to ask everybody to be respectful. This is a featured show. We are sponsored by the meet group for this hour and 15 minutes. So we're going to ask that everybody be respectful in their comments and we're going to accept, we're going to, we're going to accept no trolling, no disrespectful comments, nothing that's antithetical to forgiveness. We're not going to say anything uh, bad or hurtful. Uh, main reason, guys, is not only do we want to be respectful for me, but we want to be respectful to the content. And most importantly, we want to be respectful to our guests. Our guests every week come and share personal private stories of their lives for the benefit of you so that you can be uh, graced and benefited from the stories that they tell, that it may touch your heart and may open up doors for you. Now, this week, guys, we have a very special guest and something for the very first time that we've never done here before. We have our first ever crossover guest. What do I mean by that? We've got Edwin, CEO of Fun, and he's joining us all the way from the Kick app. Now, he's a top streamer over there, big star over there. If you guys have not been over on the kick side of the meet group, y'all need to download kick. Go see Edwin, CEO of Fun. He, you can always see him on trending or the top of the leaderboards. Really great guy. We're going to hear from him about halfway through the show, but he's making an appearance here tonight, and we're super, super grateful because this guy – I'm telling you guys, you're going to see this guy, this guy and you're going to know why we love Edwin, CEO of Fun. Really good guy, really good heart, uh, really good communicator. So I, I know you're going to be benefited from his story. And he's going to tell us a little bit of what he does on the kick side of things. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right. Last thing, and I know it's definitely not the most important, but definitely an important thing. I want to thank each and every one of you guys in advance for gifts. Guys, my content can only continue. My trending, my highlighting, my broadcast can only continue with your generosity and your gifts. So I don't want anyone to feel compelled to give, but if you can, we do appreciate any and all gifts. I may not thank you specifically in the comment section when it comes up, but please know that any and all gifts are appreciated and uh, and everything you give will be going towards good content, towards good people on this app. I reinvest everything I get into good people, so thank you. Anyways, let's get started, all right, guys? This is Forgiveness Culture. I'm your host, Moore Miserab. Each week, we explore the hope and the power and the peace that can be found in forgiveness. Now, let's talk about that static definition of forgiveness because it's really important that we're all on the same page that so we don't have miscommunication about what forgiveness is. Oh, I almost forgot. Right after we go into the definition of forgiveness, we talk about our weekly forgiveness challenge. I almost forgot this part. Our weekly forgiveness challenge is when we talk about an obstacle or aspect of forgiveness that may be a little difficult for us, may be a little bit challenging. So this week's Forgiveness challenge is what I like to call waiting for karma. 
So a lot of times when we're forgiving somebody, we like to sit around and wait for karma to catch up to that person before we can open up that door to forgiveness in our hearts and in our spirits. We want them to get what they deserve first. So we're going to talk during the forgiveness challenge about a subject I call waiting for karma. But let's get started with the uh, definition of forgiveness. What's up, uh, Lux? The definition of forgiveness is releasing the right to hate releasing the right to revenge, and in so doing, releasing ourselves from the chains of victimhood. Thank you for the love there. Uh, the definition, again, I'll repeat it, is releasing the right to hate, releasing the right to revenge, and in so doing, releasing ourselves from the chains of victimhood. Now, this is a different definition of forgiveness than many of us have. The, many, the definition of forgiveness that many of us have that we carry around in our brains is um, like releasing someone from the consequences of their action, right? Someone, someone hurts us, someone does something against us, and we just wipe the slate clean. We release it, we forget it, we act like it never happened, right? That's not what forgiveness is. That goes back to that Abrahamic definition of forgiveness that we get from the Torah or the Bible or even the Quran. Thank you for the gifts, guys. So in the Abrahamic definition of forgiveness, oh, no, um, the, in the Abrahamic definition of forgiveness, right? God forgives us of our sins. He wipes our slate clean. He casts our sin as far as his east is from west. What that does is it releases the consequence. It releases the responsibility of the offender, but that's not what forgiveness is. What forgiveness is about is taking our own freedom back that says, you hurt me, you impacted me, but I'm not going to let that hurt. I'm not going to let that pain develop hatred and resentment that's going to wear me down and it's going to affect the future decisions that I make. So what I'm saying is I am taking my power back. I am not going to be held captive. I'm not going to be held slave by the injustice of the pain that you inflicted upon me. Forgiveness is first and foremost for ourselves. It's so that we can live free. It's so that we can live a life that is empowered and released from the toxicity of the pain that someone put against you. Now, the problem is that this goes against our nature. And it's really, really important that we keep this in mind and know that we're working against our own nature when we're talking about forgiveness. When someone hurts us, right? What is our reaction? What is our inclination? When someone hurts us, we want to hurt them back. Or at the very least, we want to see them hurt the same way they hurt us. Goes back to that, that, uh, that, that, that concept of karma, right? We want to see them get what they deserve, right? And we hold on to this, we hold on to this in hopes that it's going to give us some sort of satisfaction. It's going to give us, it's going to tickle some sort of sense of justice within us. The problem is, is we are allowing that need for justice to hold our lives captive. We're allowing that need for justice, which is a misguided sense of justice, by the way. We are allowing that misguided sense of justice to, to, to be captive over our mood, over our emotions, and over our the way we treat people on a day-to-day -day basis. Because in, a, in essence, when we hold on to unforgiveness, we are failing to release our own hurt. And what do we know about hurt people, right, guys? We've been taught this since we were young. Hurt people hurt people. So if you refuse to let go of that hurt, if you refuse to re explore the path to forgiveness, right, what you're going to end up doing is being captive to that unforgiveness. You're going to walk around with that pain. You're going to walk around with that anger, with that hatred, with that resentment, and it's going to affect the people that you interact with, whether you it's direct or indirect, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. Now, think about the implications of that, guys. Someone hurt you, and you are going to continue to give that person power over you by holding on to unforgiveness. When we hold on to unforgiveness, we are giving power 
to the person who hurt us. And we are not letting them releasing of that power. We are letting them hold on to that power. But think about this, the problem with this. When we are hurt, we are going to end up taking that pain out on the people in our lives, the people that are closest to us, whether we mean to or not, we're going to take that pain out on the people who are closest to us, that whether that's our coworkers, our friends, our family, our boyfriend, our girlfriend, right? We're going to take that out on them. So not only by failing to forgive, by failing to release that hatred, failing to release that resentment, not only are we giving that person who hurt us power over us, but we're giving power over the people that we interact with. So this person who hurt you now has power over the people that you're closest to in your life. Think about that a second. Now, why would you wanna give this person any more power over you than you deserve? Well, the reason is because we think that it speaks to this like power within us, right? We think misguidedly that if we're holding on to unforgiveness, we're holding on to some sort of power, right? Like, I'm not going to let them get away with this. No one pulls one over on more miserable and gets away with it. No one's going to do that. No one's going to hurt me and get the best of it, right? The problem is you are the one who's getting hurt by this. That person who hurt you, they're not thinking on a day-to-day -day basis of how they hurt you. The person who's affected by that hatred on a day-to-day -day basis is you. The person who's being weighed down on a day-to-day -day basis by this is you. You think that every time you feel hate towards this person, they're out there in the universe somewhere going, whoa, whoa, I can feel more hating me right now. I can feel more being angry with me right now. That person's not feeling that. That person's not being weighed down by that. The person that's being weighed down by that is you, playa. Let go of that. Because think about this. I want you guys to think about this. Failing to forgive is basically like drinking poison and hoping that the other person
who makes a snide remark to us at work, we're going to forgive that person very differently than someone who assaults us or assaults a family member or a loved one, right? Those two injustices do not equal a similar response, all right? And keep in mind, just because we are forgiving someone, we are not releasing them from the consequences of their actions. We are going to hold people responsible. That's very important that you guys keep this in mind. Just because someone hurt you and you forgive them does not release them from the consequences of their actions. But we have to administer those consequences with a neutral and non-hateful heart. Otherwise, it's going to look like revenge. So let's look at the spectrum of forgiveness in a dynamic context, right? We have someone who makes a snide remark to us at work, someone who assaults a, a family member. Those two very different situations, we're going to forgive those people very, very differently, right? On one side of the spectrum, it may just mean having a conversation with someone or maybe even letting, letting it go, right? We're not going to let something go when someone assaults a family member. Maybe in that situation, that person may end up going to jail or prison, right? Can we forgive someone that goes to jail or a prison? Can we actively say, hey, I support you going to jail. I support you going to prison or I support you cutting. I support myself cutting you out of my life. Can you cut someone out of your life and still forgive them? Can you hope someone goes to jail and still forgive them? Absolutely, we can. We can cut people out of our life if it's a healthy boundary for us. Here's the question you need to ask yourself. Here's the question you need to ask yourself. If you're wor worried, am I seeking revenge or am I holding someone accountable? Is what you're doing what's best for you or what's worst for them? I'm going to say that again because it's important. Is, are, is what you're doing what's best for you or what's worst for them? Because if you're doing what's best for you, thank you, Chris, for the wheels. Y'all make sure to favorite Chris Casper in the house. If you're doing what's best for you, then you're going to be administering healthy boundaries. You're going to be doing things that protect yourself, that hold that person accountable. If your goal is to do what's worse for them, then your focus is on pain. Your focus is on hurting them. Your focus is on revenge. So always ask yourself that question. But if you know what, you can say goodbye to someone, you can cut them out of your life, now, I'm one of those people who I always advocate for keeping people in your life as long as possible. I don't, I don't ever cut someone out of my life unless it's absolutely necessary, but everybody has their own way. And I'm not saying that my way is best, but the way we do it is with the pure heart. We don't want to wish someone bad. We can say, you know what? You're no longer a part of my life. I wish you well. Just because I want to see you eat doesn't mean I want you at my dinner table. And just because I don't want you at your dinner table doesn't mean I don't want you to eat. So it really just depends. That's why the dynamic aspect of forgiveness contrasts the static definition of forgiveness so well, because forgiveness can look very, very different. The, the goal here is that you do, sub, you do what you do in response to a pain without hatred and without resentment. If you can do that, then you can at least be on the right path to being to to uh, to justice and peace okay now we this is forgiveness culture we just talked about the static and dynamic definition of forgiveness now it's time to talk about our weekly forgiveness challenge now i'm not going to talk long about this because i think this is something that even though it goes counter intuitive to what a lot of us believe i think it's something that if you really search your soul and your spirit you're going to find to be true this week's forgiveness challenge is a lesson i call waiting for karma a lot of us, right, when we when someone hurts us, we don't actively seek revenge against them, right? We don't actively hate them on a day-to-day -day basis. But in the back of our mind, we don't really truly release that unforgiveness until they get what they deserve. How many of you guys have been hurt by someone and maybe you didn't seek revenge, but you kind of keep tabs on them to see if they got what they deserve? Let me see if karma got you. Let me see if, yeah, was, is that anybody in here, right? Like you're like, uh, let me see, let me see, let's, uh, let me see what's going on in John's life today. Let me see if he finally got what he deserved. Ooh, let me see who John's dating. Did that, did that, did that girl cheat on him like he cheated on me? Let's, like, let, let, here's the problem. Even if you're not actively seeking hatred, you're not actively seeking revenge. 
by waiting for karma in order to forgive, we are allowing that person still to occupy space in our mind and in our hearts and in our spirit. We are basically allowing that person to live rent free in all of this until they get what they deserve. And the thing is, guys, we don't know. Now, a lot of us believe in karma, but at the end of the day, maybe, kar maybe karma exists, maybe it doesn't. But at the end of the day, do you really want to wait for your happiness to depend on when this person gets what they deserve? Do you really want to hang your satisfaction and your joy in life on this person skidding justice? Are you really going to let your life's work and your future and your legacy and how you live on a day-to-day -day basis are you gonna have that depend on what happens to someone else take your power back guys don't, don't wait around for karma all right maybe karma will get them maybe it won't but at the end of the day the great thing about forgiveness the great thing is about taking our power back is that what we're saying is no matter what happens to you, I'm moving on with my life. I hope you get what you deserve and I'm going to hold you responsible in whatever way I can that's good for my healthy, for my self-love and for my healthy boundaries. But as for me, I'm not going to let my happiness depend on, on what happens to you anymore. I wish you well. That's it. Welcome, guys. This is Forgiveness Culture. I'm your host, Moore Miserab. We explore the hope and the peace that can be found in forgiveness every single week. This week, guys, we have a wonderful guest coming up here in just a few minutes. His name is Edwin, CEO of Fun, big star over on the kick side of the app. We're going to have him join the box in just a few minutes to tell his forgiveness story. We just got done talking about the static and de dynamic definitions of forgiveness. Then we just got done talking about our weekly forgiveness challenge, which I called waiting for karma. Don't wait for karma for you to live your best life aside and independent of anybody who hurt you. Now, right before our guest, guys, we're going to talk about our weekly forgiveness example. This week comes from the uh, Forgiveness Project website. Guys, I'm so eager to share this story. It's such a powerful story. Now, I'm going to have to truncate it for time, but I highly, highly encourage you guys to read this story online. The name of this person, her name is Bridget Perenyi, P-E-R-E-N-Y-I. Guys, Bridget was born in Ghana, okay? She lived with her, uh, her mom, in a very poor life in Ghana until the age of seven. She said, up until the age of seven, I for him to be cured was to sacrifice a young female so when bridget went to go live with her uncle her uncle sacrificed her to this this sick religious shaman who's turned her into a slave and she lived her life as a slave for over 10 years and she was rescued by a, uh, 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 an organization that was doing investigations into some of the, these polytheistic slavery camps inside of Ghana. And she was rescued. And I'm not gonna go into all the terrible things that happened to her while she was a slave. But as you guys could just imagine, she obviously endured unspeakable tragedies. She was rescued and actually uh, moved to America. And she lived with a, a family from Ghana in America who adopted her. But she held around this hatred towards her mother for years and years and years and years and years. For 21 years, she said she held on to this hatred towards her mother. She could not forgive her mother. She said, how could my mom 
allow me to go live with my uncle who sold me into slavery, who sacrificed, not even sold, sacrificed me willingly. How could she let that happen? Well, she started her own crusade for people. She started her own nonprofit organization to help people in Ghana. And one day she organized some of her volunteers and they went back to Ghana and visited her family in Ghana. She had a full intentions of taking a little detour and telling her mother off, basically going at her mother and telling her exactly what she thought. Her mother, to her surprise, embraced her mother. I mean, embraced Bridget because she thought Bridget was dead. She had no idea that this was going on with her daughter for all these years. So all this anger that Bridget held because she thought her mom willingly sent her into this terrible life, that ate away at her for years in vain because her mother didn't even know that this happened to her. She was so thrilled to see her daughter and they were reunited and they were able to rekindle a relationship together. And to this day, they're still working on that relationship. But what she said that really stuck me is that you never know that person that you're holding on to hatred for, you never know that person's perspective. You never know what that person is going through or what that person knows. So don't waste your time hating someone before you know the full story because that story might just surprise you. Anyways, welcome to Forgiveness Culture, guys. I encourage you guys, there's obviously a lot more to that story. Again, the, the woman's name is Bridget Perenyi, P-E-R-E-N-Y-I. I highly encourage you guys to read her story. It's an, it's an amazingly powerful story. Um, and like I said, guys, I truncated it a lot for time, but it'll give you a really great um, uh, idea on the power of perspective. All right. Um, we talked about the dynamic and static definition of forgiveness. We talked about our weekly forgiveness challenge. Waiting for karma. Don't wait for karma to come around before you take your power back. And then we just talked about our forgiveness example from Bridget from the Forgiveness Project and how she was able to forgive her mother after 21 years by able by getting to see her mother's perspective. Um, now it's that time of the show. It's my favorite time of the show where we have our guest, our featured guest. Every week, guys, we have a featured guest who tells their own story of forgiveness. Now, guys, this guy is a guy who needs no introduction, but I'm still going to give him one because – if you were on the kick side, he, he wouldn't need an introduction, but I think he needs one over here. So I'm going to let you guys know Edwin, CEO of a fund. He is a top streamer over on the kick app. This guy is the truth. He's an amazing streamer. I highly encourage you guys to go. Blake, thank you, by the way. Y'all make sure to favorite top badge, Blake Premier, too. He's a top streamer over on the kick side of things. He has his own featured show, which I'm sure he's going to tell us about. And he's here tonight to be vulnerable with us and tell us his own story of forgiveness. So y'all please welcome a friend of the stream, the CEO. More, of what is going on? What is What's going up? on? Edwin, I feel like this has been a long time coming, man. It has, yeah. And forgive me, this is not my normal setup, not my normal place. I'm traveling right now, so I have You're my good. show set up, so forgive me on that, but. You're good. Going now. Now, you're a top streamer over on the kick side of the app. So there may be some people here who don't know who you are. So for those of us who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, uh, when we can find you streaming on kick and what you do over there. Yeah, sounds good. So like you said, I am a top streamer over on kick. So the same exact framework is just a different platform. And I've been a streamer there for about a year now. That was my first platform. I, Learned about meet me all those other things through other top badges that that tried it out for a week. They want to see what it's like, and then they're like, "Hey, come over here." So I, I have a lot of friends now from both platforms. It's still growing from there. You know how small the stream world can be. Thank you guys for all that. And as far as the times, every Monday, 7 p.m. EST, that's my feature show done different with Edwin. Same kind of concepts, like more of a talk style. We have some guests, one or two guests a week, um, a topic, and they share how they essentially went over that topic 
how they overcame it, and how would they do it again differently with the tools that they used to get out of it, right? So just different perspectives, just a, a food for thought kind of series, you know? So that's the yeah. main time. And every Monday through Saturday, typically on streaming. And it was a great, great, it's a great show. I was lucky enough to be part of it. Uh, and yeah, that was a while ago. I don't know how long ago that was, but I do remember, I think it was back in like January or February, but. Um, it, was, it was a while now, yeah. Yeah. You know, all platforms, guys. It's, it's fun. I love it. I love that idea. Yeah, definitely go go check it out, guys. Kick, you know, it's uh, it's it's a different animal, but it, we're all, in my opinion, we're all one family here, you know. So, uh, Edwin, you're 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 here to tell us your own story of forgiveness. Uh, who does your who does your story in, uh, involve? So this is a, a former best friend, someone I grew up with years. Um, we must have known each other. I want to say by this point, maybe seventeen years of our lives, so almost two decades together, right? Lifelong friend, almost. Right. And how it kind of happened was, um, you know, growing up, he was more of the socialite, but also more of the party person. So, of course, you know, that cuts a lot of very interesting crowds, especially when you're very popular, you get to you know a lot of networks. So growing up, he didn't have too many friends that stuck by him, but I was always there. I figured he was, you know, had a good heart. He just did a lot of weird things. Um, and we grew up that way. So we never, you know, this is someone I consider a brother. This is someone that... You know, like I said, we have time together, a decade plus, plus, plus. And I remember one day um, he was, we, we live in Florida. So he was, things weren't going the best for him. And he wanted a restart, right? A, ref, a, a refresh, if you will. So he's like, look, I have family in Cali. I'm thinking about moving over there. Um, my job said that they have some other family I can work with. So I can still keep doing what I'm doing. I'm like, all right, sounds good. So he goes over, adjusting new lifestyle, new everything. I'm like, how are you liking everything? It's a fresh start. They're okay, we're good. And I remember it was his birthday. It was getting close to his birthday. So he's been there for about a couple months, you know, kind of settled in now, kind of for sure live in there now. And I remember at this time specifically, I was working at a finance company and they asked if I want to renew my contract. But for whatever reason, I, I just, I didn't. They wanted me to get promoted there and they were not selling it to me. They're like, you know, we can teach you about tax laws. We'll, we'll pay for you to go learn about taxes. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, I'm not this. This is not my forte. Like, I'm good with people, yes, but I don't want to learn tax law. Like, I don't care. I'm sorry. So I was in a transition because I was either going to go back to banking, right, because I had to connect there or just start something different. So this is kind of something, you know, I'm, I'm in a, a temperamental time, if you will, so I have no income coming in. I'm, I'm looking for new ways to create. I, I have some stuff saved. And I remember he hits me up and he goes, hey, it's my birthday. I'm like, well, happy birthday. He goes, you know, is it okay if – I borrow some money and like, you know how much I make and I can just pay you back like every week. Well, I used to work at the bank. So I'm very structured with these things. I'm just not like, all right, let me just toss it to you. You go throw it back if you can. It's yeah. like, so I'm expecting every Friday that by this time, this, I don't want to fight for it. We had the, the, the verbal contract was there. Right. And it's my background. So I was making sure. And, it was there. and I'm guessing this is not like, I, I want to borrow 50 bucks. No, it was uh, a couple hundred, which then became a thousand somehow, because it, it's always a thousand. So that's that's how it works, and because everything has to be grand, all toss, you know, everything has over the top. We have to be in VIP. I'm like, who's we? You've been there for two months, bro. Like, no one's there. You know, calm down. Like, it's not that strapping. Calm down. So, and what he does, um, he's one of those the chefs that like do the um, the in front of your uh, the cooking in front of you, the hibachi hibachi chefs, right? Yeah. So very very fun very outgoing meets a lot of people all this kind of stuff and he averaged about 2k a week so you know a hundred dollars a week is fair that's not a, it's not a horrible asking price every week for a couple of weeks and then you're done it's finished so the first week no issue but then the second week it took about seven days to get the hundred i'm like okay and then the third week i noticed i started getting ghosted and i'm like okay mind you this is not you know, I wasn't hurting, but by no chance that I want to just give out a thousand when I'm not having anything to supplement my income at the time. Right. And at this point, I just started, I started, I want to do a new business. So I want to try business out instead. So I'm doing an eBay business. I'm getting into that. I just became like a, a top seller on there. So I'm starting to learn the platform, but still new. So I'm, I'm stressing out about this thing. I'm trying to make it work. Right. And he, he won't, you know, he's just making me hound them for a hundred dollars. I mean, a lot like a
potential as a person, and I just know you're just choosing to party it up right now, which is a bit extended because you know we're a little older now, so we're not 20 anymore. It's a little different now. And I just remember, um, you know, he he was like, okay, I promise you a thousand percent, like I got you ne next week. Okay, of course it doesn't happen. And after right. I realized at this point, I've been in my own personal development journey for at least a decade now. So I'm very used to setting boundaries. I'm very big on on personal space and accountability and things like that. And it's like, you know, I've given you a chance to prove yourself. And I'm giving you a lot of parameters. And you're, you're, you're choosing to fail. You know, like I'm giving you the alley, you're choosing not to dunk. And it's a kid size net. Like it's on you now. And I, I decided, you know what, like I'm going to give an ultimatum. You have this time to get something going. Otherwise, I don't believe you cherish our friendship. I don't believe I'm someone of that you said that you care about for all these times. And I'm just going to have to block you on everything and just move forward in my life. Because a real friend wouldn't be a thief. They wouldn't be someone that just takes, especially when it's not even the, the best time of my life. You know what I mean? Like I'm a transition to something brand did new. He, did, did he ever give you like any kind of excuse or explanation? Like why? Like, oh, like I, I went, like I just got in a car accident or like, you know, it was always some delay with the payment. Like it was always so, so apparently under the table now instead of like a normal job. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Like you work at a, an established chain restaurant, but okay, sure. Everything's but it do. wasn't It wasn't like he had some really major life catastrophe that was preventing him from doing this. No, not at all. Just being irresponsible. Right. With money, which is, it happens, right? So, you know, I gave him the time and the date. I said, listen, you just gotta, we got to get the ball rolling. And, you know, it gets to that time and there's still nothing, just just ghosts, so completely ghosts him again. I'm like, you know what? So I sent him a text like, hey, you made your decision. I gave you ample amount of time just to kind of show that you're going to even be trustworthy of your word because that's kind of all we have with each other anyway. So um, I just kind of cut him off then and there and I, I blocked him, right? From all platforms, everything. And, of course, you know, we had friends that were mutual friends. So, of course, that got a little sticky but not too sticky because it wasn't in Florida anymore. And I want to say, um, you know, I, I kind of just moved forward. I just, because I, I, my head, I just kind of wrap my head around, this can't be someone that's truly your friend if they're not trying to be responsible with anything that you've given them. Because it wasn't a gift. It was a very clear, like, this is what we're doing. You're an adult. I'm an adult. But I believe that you're good for it, kind of thing. A good faith, that's what we call it. A good faith deal, if you will. And, you know, he dropped the ball big time. And I guess he thought he was able to, get away with it more because of our, our relationship. But at this end of the day, if it was the other way around, I would make sure I valued and no matter what, I'd make sure whatever I said I was going to do, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? I, I think, and I honestly, I think when, when we talk about like forgiving people for, for things that they do to us and, you know, like standards and self-love and boundaries, it really, really sucks when you're, in a situation where someone is treating you in a way that you would never ever treat them or anybody else for that matter. It's really, really hard, especially when it's someone you care about, when they're treating you in a way where you know that you would never treat them that way. Right. right. And I want to say, so, you know, I left him block for a, a good while, maybe eight, nine months. And like I said, I've always been on a, a journey of self growth ever since my early twenties. And it just so happened, you know, it's about almost a year now for that date. And this is right before COVID happened. So this is before streaming and everything. So I still haven't even started streaming yet. I didn't know what this is yet. And I'm just yeah. focused on the eBay business. And one of the videos, I listened to like TED Talk and things like that throughout the day. And one of the videos was saying how, essentially what you were talking about earlier, how, you know, forgive me isn't, isn't weak. It's not a sign of weakness. It's not you you know, getting on your knees and, and, and asking to do these people back in your life, it's the opposite. It's you saying you're so understanding the situation that you can break free, you can move forward because like you're saying, you're, you're releasing the right to hate because when you're holding on to hate or a grudge and you're, you're, you're griping like this, right? I once heard you can't be blessed because if God has a blessing for you, you can't, you can't receive it. Your, your grip is too closed in right now. It's not... Even though you had two blessings, you can't get them because you have a tight fist, right? Right. And it's just something about learning to – it was a weird – I don't know how to describe it. It was like a, a such a such –
it's a big prideful thing almost to take the first step in a situation where you're not wrong. Right. Where you know you were not the aggressor, you were the, the victim, if you will. And it's like, I'm going to you to let you know, even though you wronged me, it's okay. Right? Right. And I mean, it was a tough pill, but the, the video is very clear. You know, all stuff helps very clear. They give you situations on how to do it, but if you don't do it, you didn't learn, right? So how to do the information. And I called them up. We talked for a while, a good hour, I'd say, maybe some change. And, you know, the first thing on his brain was, you know, I, I got you. I'm going to pay you back. I'm like, you know what? Don't worry about it. This call's not even about that. This is just to let you know I forgive you. My heart is not full of hate. That's I have no ill will towards you. I wish you the best. I know you have good potential. I just, again, this is not someone that I would associate with. So we're no longer going to continue being friends still. But I just want you to know now there's not this weird animosity. or there's not this weird ill will or anything like that towards you. Bro, that is, I think that's such a beautiful story. There's so much I want to un unpack here and talk with you about from this story. But I think one of the things before I kind of go like touch on what you just said, one of the things that really hit me was like when you mentioned like your pride and your ego. And I've never really thought about that. This is why I love having guests on my show every week because it, 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 it introduces an aspect of this topic that really makes me think and introduces them. Like it is, it really is something we have to check our ego for. I think that may be surprising. I never even thought about that. But one of the hardest parts of forgiveness is we do have to check our pride. We do have to check our ego because we're basically – saying that we're not going to hold on by not holding out of the agent we're saying that hey even though i have the right to do something i'm gonna let that go and that that can be hard especially if we even though we know in our hearts that we're not letting them get over on us the appearance that it is it's kind of hard so that really that really hit me when you said that man like honestly like and like egos the part of it no, it's it's true. It's and the thing is with the ego, um, it's a hard pill to swallow because you you think it's anything that's a difficult situation, a tough talk. Right. It's still a tough talk. Just because it's right or wrong doesn't make it less of a tough right. talk. You know what I mean? No. So you still have to kind of move forward with it. And yeah. I like what you said, um, like that. You know that you you call this person up. You're like, I don't. I don't have any ill will for you. I feel like a lot of people, like I said, I'm one of those people. I just, for me, I try to keep people in my life as long as I can, but you know, everyone has their own boundaries and everyone has their own like way of doing things. And what's right for me is not what right for everybody else. But there are people that I have, you know, that I've cut out of my life. They're no longer in my life. And I think a lot of the times people think that we can't cut some, we can't forgive and release someone for our life what we can you know the point is like you said to do it like without that ill will without that like i hope something bad happens to you like you can release that ex who cheated on you and say hey I, i'm breaking up with you i don't like you're not part of my life anymore mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean like i hope then your well, ex your new relationship cheats on you or i hope something bad happens to you like because that all that does is plague us yeah. <laughs> with the toxicity no, and another thing too is, you know, after I did that, it truly was like a, a weight lifted off my shoulders, right? And it's funny because, um, you know, kind of alluded back to what you're saying, you you give that right to release, right? You're finally letting go of your own, own shackle. You're you're in prison, but you're the warden with the keys, but you're standing in the cell for some reason, right? Still exactly. I love that metaphor. Now, because the thing is, I remember whenever I used to say this person's name or see it, my face would cringe and I would get this uh, instant like, uh, kind of feeling, right? And I knew, like, I truly forgave was when I saw this person's name again with through someone else that was a mutual friend and I didn't react. I wasn't like, oh, why are you bringing them up? And I was like, oh, okay, how did that go? It's just like they would with a coworker or someone else that's just passing by. Like, they don't have that power over you, but they don't have that, I'm still in your head because every time you say my name, you get a little weird. It's still a little whatever. Because that's still you holding on to it. You know what I mean? So Right. Yeah, it's and, true. Let go, though. And the the deeper the deeper the pain, the harder that's going to be, you know. So I and, and I want to be careful because I know there's a lot of people. I, I feel like 
there's always someone out there who's listening to our stories and they're going, yeah, but you don't know my story. Right. You don't know what happened to me. And it, it's, you're right. We don't. And every situation is different, but at the end of the day, it's, it's like Edwin said, like you're taking your power back and you're freeing yourself. You're hold, you're, you're the one standing inside that cell. And while we may not know your story, you know, we're giving you examples of, of, of how forgiveness works. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, like there's, there's no benefit to unforgiveness. You know what I mean? It doesn't do anything for us. And it's funny cause um, you know, I've learned that we, we think that holding on to this hurt and this pain, it, it makes you on edge or sharper for the next one. Right. And right. it really doesn't, it, it doesn't just, it just now lets you go into this new potential with almost like a stain, right? Like you don't look at it the same way. You're like, oh, you're gonna just when when are you gonna do it? Almost, right? And it's like right. you gotta kind of talk yourself out of that mentality sometimes. Right. And you know, guys, like I said, we don't know your story. And this it, it may be forgiveness for you. Like, and that's why I always talk about the dynamic aspects of forgiveness. Forgiveness is gonna look different depending on the situation, depending on who hurts you. It may be something that you have to fight for every day. You know, if I know for me, I can forgive you for hurting me, but if you if you hurt someone I, I love, I care about, man, that's gonna be a forgiveness thing. Man, that's gonna be a battle for me. That's gonna be a battle, big battle. So, but at the end of the day, you know, I think it's about, if we wanna live in freedom, I think it's a battle worth having, you know? Um, so uh before you know we kind of wrap things up here um i think i i've seen a few a few comments about like uh you didn't accept the money i think i know the answer to this question but for you from your perspective why why for you was it like i don't i don't need it man i'm just for one, it was not going to come. Okay, like just because they say, <laughs> just because you're offering, there's an offering is very different from doing it. Okay, there's a huge difference because you have my PayPal. You could very easily just PayPal me the money or Absolutely, the cash. Absolutely, hundred percent. No, that's number one. It was never going to happen. And number two, it's not a transactional thing. The the thing that was hurt by me wasn't so much that the money wasn't repaid. It was I gave you a chance when literally no one else believed you. You're you know. Your family didn't have your back. The banks wouldn't help you. You wouldn't get money. I was the only person willing to put it on the line. Say, you know what? I know all you guys are going to doubt me for doing this, but I know he's good for it. And I'll give you an opportunity to show other people up. And then, they, unfortunately, you just do what they're saying. It's like, bro, come on, man. Like and that, and that's that's what hurts the most. It's the betrayal. You know, it's not. It's you know, and, and, and honestly, when we look a lot of the times at why we're hurt, and I've, I've, I've kind of lessened, I've learned this lesson from hearing so many stories is like, it's very rarely the content of the hurt. Right. It's the fact that that person allowed the hurt to happen in the first place. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that again for everyone here. It's, it's very rarely the content of the hurt. It's the fact that that person allowed that hurt to take place in the first place. I mean, um, I think that says it all. So um, I love this story. I love that you reached out with them. You know, a lot of people don't know. I had, when, we, when I did um, Forgiveness Culture for the, uh, Forgiveness, I started this off as a non-feature show. And I did the, mm-hmm. one of the first episodes, I did my own story of forgiveness. Thank you for the rose. And I did, I, I, ha- I was holding on for years to some things that my college fraternity brothers did to me. And even though I forgave them right before I started the show, I reached out to them and I told them like, Hey, you know, I forgive you guys. I forgave you guys a long time. But I don't expect anything back like this. And um, it, it's like, even though this happened years ago and I had already forgiven them, there was such, it was like a weight had been lifted. Like almost like I was just setting some stuff free um, when I said it out loud and I acknowledged it. So I know exactly um what you're what you're talking about um two questions before we let you go we always ask these two questions of every guest on our show the first question is if someone is out there in you know the, the uh audience and they're going through a similar situation what would be your best advice to them i would say just you know you can give them patience
protect yourself by allowing people to walk over you or to take from you because you're being nice or you're, well, if it's not me, it's, don't think like that. Like respect yourself, respect your, your personal space and what you have going on, no matter what it is, money, right. time, emotion. It, it's important that you value what you have and other people should value it as well. I love that, man. I think that's an, a, an aspect of forgiveness some, that, that some people don't always keep in mind is that, you know, when we forgive, that doesn't mean we're releasing them of the consequences of their actions or their, it's a clean slate or that we can't do things to empower ourselves. Thank you for the gifts. It, it's, we, can always, we can always demonstrate self-love and self-boundaries while still not holding on to hatred and animosity. So I love, mm -hmm. I love the way you put that. Uh, last question for you. This is my favorite question. I always ask every guest at the end of the show. If there's someone out there hearing your story and they say, you know what, that person doesn't for deserve your forgiveness. What would be, what would be your response to them? That's well, untrue because everyone deserves forgiveness. Like, let's face it, if, you know, if you can say that like very boldly, can you say it in the mirror? Can you truly say that same statement in the mirror knowing you've messed up? And if you haven't messed up, you're going to mess up. It's going to happen. It's not if you mess up, it's when and how right. many times, right? So if you deserve to be forgiven, they do too. Even if it's the most atrocious, again, like you said, let's don't separate the crime from the person, right? Like, they might be a good person in a bad situation, but right. if you have to forgive, you got to you got to do it for yourself. You got to do it for others. It's it's a two way street. You can't just be one way. Yeah, Edwin from Kick, uh, Princess. We got the one and only Cross here. Uh, for baby. <laughs> and you know, I love I I love that. You know, I I've, I've one of my favorite things to say is 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 don't judge people because you you don't want to be judged by your own worst mistakes. You know, I I know for me, I make a shit ton of mistakes. I made a huge, literally I was late for the show because of the gigantic mistake that I made tonight, which I'm not going to go into. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right, Jay. Thanks. <laughs> and both DJs like speaking of speaking of mistakes, watch your language. Um, but I was late for the show tonight because of a giant mistake I made in my personal life, which I'm not going to get into, but like, I don't want to be judged by my worst mistakes. And if you judge others by their worst mistakes, then what right do you have to, to claim freedom over your own, you know? Um, and so I like that. We have what we all make mistakes and, um, we're only human. Um, so like you said, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I'm a true believer that there are no good people and there are no bad people. We are, we're, nothing but a sum of the choices we make so if you think that you're a bad person start making good choices and it's really as simple as that um but anyways all right edwin uh i so appreciate you being on the show tonight man for those of you who uh for those of us who weren't here when when you made your introduction can you please let us know who you are where you stream when we can find you live and yeah, what so you do guys i am edwin ceo fun a top streamer top badge on kick exact same framework just a different name same you, you won't it won't be hard to figure it out guys and we stream mainly monday through saturdays the feature show we have is on every monday 7 p.m est done and different with edwin edwin thank you so much for being on the show y'all guys make sure y'all what another amazing episode Uh, of forgiveness culture. Oh, Edwin, some love. Thank you, Edwin. I appreciate it. He, he, he came all the way over from a different platform. Marty, thank you. He came all the way over from a di different platform to share his story with us. Uh, I'm very, very grateful for him for doing that. Um, I want to, uh, I want to, and uh, Edwin, my top five of the stream. Thank you guys for supporting the content. We got, you guys know this, this stream can only happen with your support. So I do appreciate everybody. Guys, next week we have a huge, lovely stream. It's not huge as in like size, but huge as in big name on this, on the, on the stream. Um, we have the person who took over pet profiles and she's coming to our show. We have the one and only Kitty Commander. Have her on. Uh, she's a great streamer, a, a big sweetheart, and she is going to be sharing her own story of forgiveness 
next Wednesday. That would be September the 28th. So you guys, if you don't know Kitty Commander, if you don't know, I used to host a show called Pet Profiles. All right. It was a pet show here on the app. And I got the idea from Blake Premier, who hosted a show called Pet Happy Hour. So I took what Blake did and I added a whole bunch of sugar and spice to it. And then Kitty Commander took pet profiles and she made it even better. So if you guys don't know Kitty Commander, her, she hosts a show every Monday called Meow and Me, where you get to see all the pets of the live community. And it's an adorable show. It's better than Pet Profiles ever was, uh, in my opinion. And uh, she's going to be on the show next week on Forgiveness Culture to share her story. And then, and then the week after next, I'm still not revealing who the big streamer is. The big ticket name that we've got for a special series episode of Forgiveness on October 5th, we have a special series all about loyalty. Loyalty, a rare, beautiful, and dying quality loyalty. And we're going to have a special guest here on October 5th, big, big name on the app. And he or she, did I already say it was going to be a he? Or did I say it would be could be a she? I don't know. Whoever it is, big name on the app, they are going to them. They, them, oh Lord, not the pronouns. Okay. That streamer, big streamer, is going to join us on October 5th to talk about loyalty. I'm really excited about sharing this uh, guest with you guys. I'm not going to reveal it until next week. So you guys make sure to tune in next week. Um, and I, I want to say one more thing uh, uh, before I, I let you guys, guys go for the night. I do want to apologize that I have not been as present on the app in the past few weeks. Guys, I'm doing my absolute best. I promise I try to go live when I can. I know a lot of people are DMing me. We miss you live more when you go in live. We never see you on stream anymore. I'm really, really, really sorry, guys. I'm trying to do better um, just between people and other things in my personal life that I'm making a priority right now. Um, it's it's just been really, really difficult for me to get on, um, on, on the stream. I do miss you guys. I do uh, wish I could be here more. But unfortunately, like I said, between work and school and um, stuff in my personal life that I'm, I'm, I'm making a priority right now, um, it's, it's, it's just I can't be live as much as I want. Um, it's, just, it's just the reality of the situation. I do I appreciate people like Blake and especially Tawny, who uh, Poppy Stark, Marty, people who are like Aaron, uh, people who are there week after week to kind of keep me afloat and keep my badge secure. Um, I do appreciate that. I, I, I promise I'm doing my absolute best. And I love all of you guys. And I appreciate you all for being here. Again, guys, this is Forgiveness Culture. I'm your host, Mor Miserab. Make sure y'all tune in uh, next week uh, at the same time, same forgiveness time, same forgiveness station uh, for our guest, Kitty Commander. And uh, remember, it costs nothing to be nice, and it's free to be kind. So treat other people with love and make the world a better place. And if you can't make the world a better place, at least don't make it worse. All right? Marty, Tawny, uh, Jared, Queen, y'all all have a great night, okay? Everybody else, I, if I miss you, uh, Mystery Mom, I love all you guys.